Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, sorry I haven't been on my regular uh, release schedule, but uh, work was uh, absolutely crazy this uh, this week. So I've been doing a lot of long hours and, uh, and it's showed. But we have a couple of guest knives uh, here. These both belong to my son-in-law. So thank you, Jacob, for letting me borrow these and uh, giving them a, a shakedown kind of. Uh, what we have before you is the uh, Kershaw Dividend and the uh, Buck 841 Sprint Pro. Uh, we'll go over both of these uh, separately and we'll look at some of the uh, really cool features. Uh, both of these uh, knives are retailing right around the, uh, the same price. The uh, Buck Pro is uh, about $99 and the Kershaw is running about $93. But I think you'll see why once we get into it uh, kind of why these uh, have the features that they do and then also with the uh, little screwdriver on the uh, on our table here we're going to uh, show you something with the uh, buck uh, clip that uh, was not always uh, so great in fact that's probably the, the main drawback on that knife is the clip but hey let's get into that uh, just a little bit later so what we have with our uh, Kershaw Dividend, it's a uh, composite blade, which is actually really kind of cool. So this upper part here is actually a uh, Bowler N690. And then on the uh, cutting edge, that's uh, D2. And it's a CPM D2, which is uh, probably uh, really a uh, very uh, good uh, cutting edge, you know, because it's, uh, I believe, that that's a powdered uh, D2. I could be wrong, but you steel guys will let me know. I'm not as much of a steel nerd. Uh, you know, as I've uh, stated, I think many times, I'm, I'm good with 1095. Yeah, so, so you guys can school me on, uh, on steels. But uh, it is kind of cool that it's a composite uh, edge. So they did that with the uh, N690 uh, because it, is uh, corrosion resistant and it's pretty hard and the CPM D2 is on your cutting edge for edge retention and the properties that D2 has. And I know some people worry about D2 rusting because it's a semi stainless steel. Uh, really nothing that just a, a small bit of maintenance, you know, just put a little bit of oil on it or uh, some of the um, EDCI liquid uh, those will work if you're going to use this for any kind of food prep or anything. You might want to do some uh, some kind of mineral oil or something. But it has this beautiful uh, anodized olive green handle. Uh, my uh, son-in-law prefers the clip there. I didn't move any of the uh, the clips. It does have a lanyard hole for those that want it. It is a uh, liner lock. It has a nice uh, deep carry. Uh, pocket clip so you can see just how how deep that rides it's actually you know below uh, the upper edge of the the frame there as it sits in your pocket uh, I really liked this knife a lot in fact of the two I think this is this is my favorite uh, perfect Kershaw action uh, these things spring right out and uh, plenty of room in my hand uh, I really I, I, but I like Kershaw knives anyway, so I mean, I'm kind of, you know, maybe a little bit uh, prejudiced uh, towards that. I mean, I like buck knives too, but as a flipper, uh, you know, this one is, could be a little bit better. Now, it has the uh, burlap micarta uh, handles, which is absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, they've kind of textured this uh, grooving in here. You have a nice uh, anodized aluminum uh, backspacer here that's a different color and that's you know nice and you have this uh, pocket clip and let's go ahead and you can see that there's not a whole lot of construction uh, with it this uh, is made out of uh, s30v and it has the uh, the paul boss uh, heat treat on it very good blade i this blade absolutely is fantastic uh, I like this kind of a rough uh, jimping. It's not really, it doesn't grab your hand, but it's, you know, kind of a nice, uh, the file work on here is just, just kind of nice. You know, it's uh, decorative, but it does serve a, uh, a function. And it's really uh, something you don't see on a lot of knives. 
It also is a liner lock. Now, see if you, this is what I found with the action on this one. If you aim it down, it jumps right out. If you give it a flick of the wrist, oops, sorry, it uh, will jump right out. Uh, if you kind of hold it up at an angle, and it kind of just doesn't, doesn't go all the way. You know, it's kind of like you just, even if you have it, you know, straight up, it does not want to go. Whereas with our uh, Kershaw, you can have that thing vertical and it still will spring out and lock up. You know, so with these guys, you know, no, no wrist flick is uh, required. And if you need a one-handed knife, the last thing you want to do is, you know, not have it deploy. And that's, that's the only, you know, and this is on ball bearings too. So you would think that it would uh, be a little bit better, but it does have a nice uh, lockup as long as you're pointing that blade down. Uh, they just needed a, uh, a better spring in there or something. Uh, but yeah, this, the way the handle is, the handle is, is wonderful. It really, this is a very comfortable knife to use and I liked using it. Uh, the thing with the clip is if you see that the, you know, spoon or bill or whatever you want to call it here, it really kicks up quite a lot, uh, much more than on the Kershaw. Let me close these knives up so it'll be a little bit easier for me to compare these things without actually cutting myself. But as you can see, the spoon or, or bill or end of it really kicks up quite a bit and even here's another uh knife over here let me get this one this is a uh a buck uh this is the uh what what is the name on this guy i can't remember <laughs> i hate it when i when i'm not uh prepared for these things but it happens but if you look at the clip on it uh again you know it's very nice and very doable and see how much taller this one sticks out plus this one had the nice little uh hump for you know when you're wearing a pocket knife in your pocket and it's actually riding there this actually gives room for that seam to get up in there and that's uh and then it doesn't you know seem like it chokes up but with this knife you would think that the clip might be reversible but it's actually not so that's why we have our, our good uh, screwdriver here. I'm gonna try to do this on camera. I'm not used to having to uh, look through a, a viewfinder. Here, let me just do this from the uh, side. But, uh, did I grab the wrong one? I did. This is my T8 and I need my T6. Sorry guys, these things happen. But yeah, let's get this apart. And you'll see that it's not quite reversible. You can reverse it. And that's one of the things that I think is kind of missing on uh, this knife. So if you go to reverse it on the other side, now your clip sticks out like this. And so they tried to do it you know, in a good way that they were up on top, but really you can only have this clip right on the, uh, the one side for, you know, basically tip up, uh, carry on the, uh, on the right side. And that's, and that's it. I mean, you could put it on the left, but still it's just uh, tip up carry. If, if you like that, then it's cool. I'll put that together, but you can't reverse it. Whereas on the, uh, Kershaw, you can put it, you know, up at the top, you can put it at the bottom, you can put it here, you can put it there. You have your nice uh, four-way thing. And for a premium knife, uh, I just think that that's something that, you know, they should have thought of that in engineering. And it should have been something that they uh, did also the, the uh, kind of soft action that it has. You would think that that would be something that they would, you know, go ahead and fix up. Let's go over some uh, specs on these guys. Like I said, they're really kind of neck and neck. So for our Kershaw Div Dividend, we're looking at a three inch drop point blade. It runs four and a quarter inches closed and it weighs 2.8 ounces. It just disappears 
in your pocket. It was very comfortable to uh, to carry. I had absolutely you know zero issues with it whatsoever. With your uh, buck, what you're looking at is it's just a little over three inch uh, drop point blade, and it runs about four inches closed. And uh, you know what? I forgot to get the weight on that one. Uh, sorry, guys. <laughs> You'll have to look that one up because I use my phone to film. So uh, again, another another uh, YouTube fail on my part. But hey, it happens. That's why you guys tune in because I'm not perfect. I'm like the rest of you. <laughs> I like to make mistakes, and I don't hide them in editing or anything. You know, because hey, I'm just a I'm just a guy. What do I know? Anyways, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap that up here. I'll put that uh, clip back together uh, off camera, but I just want to thank you guys for uh, coming around and sticking with me. Uh, I have some more uh, videos that will be coming out uh, soon enough, but yeah, this this knife, to tell you the truth, the weight, it's neck and neck with the uh, Kershaw. I think the Kershaw is a little bit uh, lighter, and I think this guy's right around three ounces as well. Uh, neither one were were a hassle in the uh, in the pocket, so uh, both were excellent blades and they both worked. The buck just had a couple of uh, issues, which you know I just think that they would have had that uh, sorted out before they released it out in the wild. But uh, these things happen. Anyways, uh, I thank you guys for watching, and I will uh, see you all in the uh, next one. Take it easy, guys.